had written the gift of the ladybug for him and just, and we read it and read it. He became our ladybug. And so I was dancing with him like, TJ, TJ, I need to know you're gonna be okay. I have to know, and I'm dancing with him in his ear. I have to know you're gonna be okay. Would you please send me a sign? You're okay, like on the other side, please. Maybe a ladybug. So I asked him to send me a ladybug. Well, TJ had died on a Sunday at 6 a.m. And he said, you know what? I'm gonna say a prayer for those who have recently passed. Well, my uncle Steve was with this sweet girl, Grace, eight-year-old Grace. They, they were like church buddies and she, is just drawing in crayons and stuff during the church service while there he says the, the pastor says the prayer for those who have recently passed she gets down on her knees and she's just she's just writing with her crayons and she she gives this beautiful picture to uncle steve and she says you need this he basically gave me this picture and it was of a ladybug in flight with this huge smile she had never drawn a ladybug before i mean it was like in church through grace hours after tj died he sent me a ladybug. Hello and welcome to Along the Way Life's Journey. I'm your host, Carl Bucciolano. Our guest today is Carol Mack, best-selling author of The Gift of the Ladybug. She is a journalist, philanthropist, creator, and host of over 150 episodes featuring the world's best chefs and sommeliers. She must eat very well. Her latest series, Some School Insider, follows her journey becoming an insider in the Sommelier Society of America which appears on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Reiku Globally. She earned her BA in Michigan State University, her international MBA from Henley Business School in the UK. She has appeared in virtually every channel possible and glamour. With over 20 years experience, Carol Mack's mission is to enhance bliss and empower through food, wine, and her beloved late son, TJ. Welcome, Miss Carol Mack. Wow. Ah! Thank wow. you so much for having me. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so glad to have you here. I really am because I, I, uh, I'm really impressed by you. I, I have to say, you know, I'm one of these old dogs that's been around forever. And when I and I wait when I meet new guests, every once in a while, I, I see things that people do, and they write books, and they they do things, and I say, oh, that's very nice. That's very nice. That's very nice. But you really seem to put your money where your mouth is. You got into <laughs> this. Really? You wrote this fabulous book, Ladybug. It got national acclaim. You started a, a, a national foundation that moved forward with generating money and activity and awareness. Tell us a little bit about that. So I wrote a book called The Gift of the Ladybug, which is a children's picture book. And right here, actually. Children's picture book, The Gift of the Ladybug. And it's inspired by my son, TJ, that teaches us all that we're perfect exactly as we are. It's about two horses who have a ladybug son and the ladybug's very different than the horses. He flies and he lives a very short life and he teaches the horses that it's all okay and that he's perfect exactly as he is. And it's just a beautiful, it's a really beautiful book. And I've been able to raise a lot of money for the United Mitochondrial Disease Foundation. And now all of my fundraising efforts go to Make-A-Wish Metro New York, which is really exciting. Yes. And um, I made this cute little bug, Polka Dot, who is a absolute warrior. How cute is that? That's perfect. And so <laughs> cute. And you can do, and it, it, this is a, just a book that's um, really about accepting difficult diagnoses with peace and power. And TJ is just an absolute hero. And Polka Dot is basically what uh, TJ and what TJ, my son, taught me um, just about life and how to live powerfully, how to live in love, not in fear, um, how to accept, how to be a radical acceptor of life circumstances, yeah. regardless of what they are. Yeah. And you can buy a book and a sweet little Polka Dot. It's a comfort kit for kids at Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is really fun on giftoftheladybug.com. So it's just a really special, I mean, it's it's like my life's work. I, I feel like once I put the book out on TJ's birthday, it was two years after he passed away. And I thought, all right, I guess I could die happy now. <laughs> oh, go on happy now. Yeah, Live well, a hundred percent, but like I got it done. I got it done. Right, like, right. You had a now, goal, you had a goal, you worked towards it, you persevered and you got it done. And not only right. did it get, you get it done, you got it done brilliantly so that yeah. it was received well and it's doing what you had anticipated. It's bringing attention. It's raising funds. 
I think that's wonderful. You know, uh, I did a little book myself here after I retired a few years ago, and uh, un unbeknownst to me, people liked it. And I went into a second printing, and you know, it was one of these things. I did fifty years worth of journaling, believe it or not, and they oh. were all in the garage. And my wife said one day. Look, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Put it together, make a book because you can help other people's lives. Aww. I said, okay. And it ended up doing quite well. The book is called To Every Page of Turning. It's from the scripture Ecclesiastics that every part of our life has a new turn, a new beginning, and a new opportunity. And uh, it's done very well. And as a result of the book doing well, it was first place with Amazon bestseller. And with, as a result of that, I produced this podcast, which two years ago when they told me, you know, you're pretty good on TV. Why don't you do a podcast? I said, podcast? What's a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know what it was. And today I own one. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Your wife knew exactly what she was doing and go you for. My wife's a brilliant woman. Brilliant woman. You see that little painting next to the book? Yep. Right there. Oh, That's there. Oh, yeah. That's a picture that she painted more than 20 years ago. Whoa. It's a picture of the shepherd holding the lamb in his hand. And you see Christ's scars on his hand. That book has gone global. That picture has gone global. Billy, wow. Billy Graham used it in his crusades. It's been in magazines. It's been all wow. over the world. And wow. he, like I, we give back because we don't profit from those things. We give it back. I love it. I love it. I love it. So she would love you. Well, I got to tell you, she would love ah! you. And, and it's because she's she's your kind of person. She's uh, oh, I love it. I would dedicated. Love she's brilliant. She's beautiful. She's just like you. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, sweet. really, she is. She's just like you. And uh, maybe after the show, I'll tell you more about it. But okay. anyway, so you've done 150 episodes with the biggest chefs in the world. How does that get to happen? I mean. <laughs> How do oh, you get to do all that stuff? Oh, that's a good point. You know, it's it's so funny. It, it all started when I was pregnant with TJ and I was in Columbus, Ohio. I was, I was, that's where my family's from. And I remember watching the Food Network and I was like, I have no idea why or how. I've been in food and loved food my whole life. I had a, Chicago, a business about food in Chicago since moved to Columbus. And I was like, I don't know how, but that's my future that's my future. And I have no idea how or why, because I'm in real estate. I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm pregnant with a kid. How am I going to do that for my future? And I didn't mean Food Network per se. It just meant having my own shows on food and wine. Right. And, um, and then uh, I, and I had no idea what was going to go down with TJ. And then after everything went down with TJ and we learned he was, he wasn't going to make it. Um, and I just kind of, I tabled it. Like I basically, I shot, I shot, um, an episode of a pilot of this fun idea that I had in New York. TJ was four months and we had no idea anything was going on with him. And I was like, I had never felt so alive in my life. I was like, this is what I have to do with my life. And I got back and literally the next day we found out that TJ had a progressive condition and it just went down from there. And about a year after he passed away, cause I couldn't even think of being on camera then. I was like, oh my gosh. TJ gave me this dream. It's him because it was with him in my belly that it came for the first time ever. This dream of having my own food and wine shows. And I thought, oh my gosh, this he gave me that gift to have something to reach towards, to be called to, to, to do. And I thought, oh my gosh. So I just followed the dream. I moved to New York. I found a wonderful place, wine for food, to work with. Um, after I trained under another uh, food personality. I was able to be the face of wine for food and they, they let me do, uh, <laughs> I convinced them and they let me do uh, videos on food and wine. And then I just kept training, 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 following it. And, um, and we just kind of, I just kind of made it, made it happen, shaped it. And then my, my latest episode or my latest, um, series it's called some school insider and it's and it made it on roku made it on the yeah, big screen on it's amazing and so that's kind of how it's been a long journey um eight years in the making but uh that's how it went so 
what are you doing in your spare time? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be juggling everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, ooh, I probably should focus a little more. I just, do you want to hear about my latest? Yes, um, of course. So, <laughs> right. so I'm so excited about this one. It's called Food Bliss. And eight years ago, I thought about this show in my head. And I was like, what's my dream show? Like my, the show that I would do for the rest of my life and be happy. What would it be? And I know that it's, it came to me. It was Food Bliss. I was on a Sister Bliss trip with my sister. We call it Sister Bliss. And I was like, of course, it's Food Bliss. And the backstory of that, it was, say, a year after TJ died. And I had promised myself that I wouldn't let his condition or his death define me, define him or define me. The day he was diagnosed with a progressive condition, I was like, no, nope, I'm not going to be miserable forever. I'm not. That doesn't honor TJ. I'm not going to do it. Don't know how. Don't know if I can be done. No idea. But I'm, I'm going to try. And... Um, and I just kept kind of following that. And after a year, I was in agony, still getting grief counseling every week. And nothing was moving the needle. And I was just in sheer agony, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And I thought, I've got to do something drastic. And I was in the shower. I've got to do something drastic. Nothing's moving the needle. I promised myself I wouldn't be miserable forever. I'm miserable and I see no way out because TJ is always going to be gone. So how can I ever feel better? And I was like, okay, you know what we're going to do? A little exercise. What if money isn't an issue? Boom. What if you're not actually in grief? Boom. Pretend that you only have one year left to live. What would you do? And I was like, obviously I would go to Italy for three months and I would eat my way around Northern Italy. Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> like if I felt good, that's what I would do if I had one year left to live. Absolutely. So I thought, oh, and I started having levity. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could make wine. I could make cheese. Oh my gosh, I could harvest olives. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I would make my first food show. This is TJ calling me. Oh, it's starting. I see. I'm supposed to follow this calling. I'm supposed to go to Italy. So I end up going to Italy for three months and harvesting olives and making cheese and making wine. I did this program called Woofing, where you exchange work on the fields for like 16 hours harvesting olives for room and board with these amazing families that and like- And agriculture. Exactly. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my God. And the thing is, is when I got back, I was like, I had no idea what I was doing, but that moved the needle of my grief and my recovery, making it through. And I thought, the reason it works was because it was like kind of larger than life. It was my passion and it was food. So every bite I had, it would take me out of my pain. It would be like <gasps> relief. And, 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 and God put you in the sunshine. He put your hands yes. in the dirt. Yes. He had you working. That's right. Grounding, working. So I was exhausted. Absolutely. Exactly. So I had no insomnia anymore. And my nightmares started going away. You're right. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it didn't involve TJ. Like, it, 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 it involved TJ in every meaning, but it wasn't where TJ was supposed to be and wasn't. So it wasn't all about loss. It was a new memory. That's so now I have a memory after TJ passed away that wasn't just the whole of him and where I wished he was. It changed my brain chemically. And I thought, this works. I'm going to move to New York and do this all the time. And then I'm like, I've got to make a show about this. Once I heal, I need to do this for other people. I was like, it's food bliss. That's the show. I'm going to make culinary dreams larger than life. Culinary dreams come true so people can feel joy after a hardship and know it's possible. Fantastic. To feel Fantastic. You know, I said a moment ago, I'm Sicilian American. Oh, both sides of my family are from You're in I shot it in Sicily. Ah, see, I knew it. Were you in Trapani? Where did, did you? Did you? Where in Sicily? In Castilia. Okay, it was right. Don't tell me Castellamare de Golfo. No, that's where no. my people come from. Oh, where's that? Castellamare de Golfo is on the northwest coast of Sicily, between okay. Palermo and Trapani. I I drove I drove through it. That's where we make Moscato and we make Moscatel and we do all those Stop types it. of, and the greatest sea salt in the world comes from there. Oh my gosh. Oh my, this is incredible. So I thought <laughs> I've got to do food bliss. I've already done Northern Italy. I've got to come back. I'm doing Sicily. And so we did, I, Sic you changed my, Sicily changed my life. <laughs> it was, oh my gosh. So we just, so I just shot it a couple months ago in Sicily, the pilot for food bliss. 
And I brought this absolutely amazing woman, Kelly Cervantes. Um, she does epilepsy work. She's such an advocate. She's an author. She's coming out with a new book. She's amazing. She happens to be married to Miguel Cervantes, who plays Hamilton on Broadway. You might know their story because they've been in the media and they lost. You know, I know their names somehow. Oh, yeah. That's how. You know, Cervantes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don Quixote de la Mancha. Too much sanity <laughs> is insanity. <laughs> oh, my God. That's Cervantes. <laughs> I love it so much. So she, she, we, we, I treated her to a, you know, expense trade paid trip to Sicily to blow her mind with all the food right outside Mount Etna. So we were right outside my okay, Mount. That's Etna. Catania, the region of Catania, out of yes. Mount Etna. My okay. grandfather was born right there in Vincenzi, right on the no. slopes of Catania. Stop it. Oh, and his, my grandmother, his. Uh, his in-laws had a huge farm there, and they grew the biggest vegetables you ever saw because of the richness of the soil from Mount Etna. Oh my gosh, I believe it! Ah. And they have a wine they call they have a wine they call um, uh, 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 Christi de um, uh, Christa de Christi. It's yes, from the Christi. It's Tears of Christ, and it's the Tears of Christ, and that wine. You can't get it anywhere else in the world. I tasted that. It's fantastic, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. It was fantastic. amazing. We tasted it literally on the top of Mount Etna. We did a hike up, and they had, and they, and they yeah. sold it there. It's an amazing place, isn't it? Just amazing. It's the most amazing, magical, therapeutic place in the world. I felt like it healed us both. We had a transformational thing. Absolutely amazing experience. The food I've never had more like bold, rich, powerful food in your face in the best possible way. Flavors off the charts. Yeah. We used to call it peasant food, but it's real food. It's oh. the kind of thing that you really sink your teeth into. It's not just fluffy little stuff. It's real food. It's real food. Like you taste an olive. There's three times olive flavor, like whoosh, that you've ever <laughs> tasted in your life. I was like, this is the best olive I have ever tasted. And I... I had some great olives in Tuscany. Whoa. But just this is different. It's stronger than anything yeah. Yeah. I have ever experienced. Oh, my gosh. Even the fish. They were like, it's because it's the Mediterranean Sea. There's more salt and it's warmer. It's concentrated. And, and you don't eat it unless it was swimming in the morning. That's right. They catch it. They bring it, you know, farm to table. The idea that there's no fish served in Italy anywhere that's frozen. Anywhere. Italy. It's got to be <laughs> caught that morning or it's not edible. That's it. That's right. I mean, oh my gosh, it totally made it made my life. I mean, that's so, I can't believe you're from Sicily. That's so exciting. <laughs> Where your last name is Mac? Is it an abbreviation? Yeah, it's McMenemy. I'm Irish. McMenemy. Okay. Well, you guys make some pretty good stuff up there too, but it's whiskey. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely true. <laughs> so um, you're in yes. Sicily. You're doing your show, and. Uh, I'm sure, you know, the, the premise of this show is that I'd like to bring forward guests who speak about things and people and events in their lives that motivated them and inspired them to become more than they are themselves, to be mm -hmm. bigger and better than they are. For me, that was an awakening to Christ. And I'm a, I'm a man who makes no bones about it. He saved my life many, many times. But it's also the idea of in opening up your mind and your soul to the life and yes. what God has provided you. Yes. And it sounds like you had that kind of a journey. I've had that journey the whole way through. I mean, I feel like God is all over my life. Um, I'm not as, yeah, I, I would say I'm maybe more spiritual, but I'm such a believer in God. And like, the, so for instance, one story, I w it was, it was at the end with TJ and my husband and I were in the hospital and it was actually quite beautiful, very beautiful. I mean, it was all the things, um, terrifying, but so beautiful. And I'm dancing with TJ and I was just dancing with him. And I was like, cause I had written the gift of the ladybug for him and just, and we read it and read it. He became our ladybug. And so I was dancing with him like, TJ, TJ. I need to know you're going to be okay. I have to know, and I'm dancing in his ear. I have to know you're going to be okay. Would you please send me a sign? You're okay. Like on the other side. 
please, maybe a ladybug. So I asked him to send me a ladybug. And then, so my husband was, is Jewish. And so we had a shiva and it was the first day of the shiva. And my uncle Steve came and he said, hey, I, I have something that I'd really like to give you and your family uh, before the shiva. And I thought, okay, well, TJ had died on a Sunday at 6 a.m. Um, my uncle's Catholic and was going to church. And he had, the, you know, the pastor had been saying prayers for those who had recently passed. And he said, he went up to him and he said, you know, you can take TJ off the prayer chain. He passed away this morning. And, and he said, you know what? I'm going to say a prayer for those who have recently passed. Unbelievable. Well, my uncle Steve was with this sweet girl, Grace, eight-year-old Grace. They, they were like church buddies. And she is just drawing in crayons and stuff during the church service. While there, he says, the, the pastor says the prayer for those who have recently passed. She gets down on her knees and she's just, she's just writing with her crayons. And she, she gives this beautiful picture to Uncle Steve. And she says, you need this. And Steve, Uncle Steve had it. Oh, I, sh I sh wish I could go get it. It's right in my it's right in there if you want to go see it. But anyway, um, it, he basically gave me this picture and it was of a ladybug in flight with this huge smile. She had never drawn a ladybug before. I mean, it was like in church through grace hours after TJ died, he sent me a ladybug. I, and believe, I, it. I, just, I believe it. <laughs> Nobody knew I had asked for that. Uncle Steve didn't know. Grace didn't know. And then our, our, our entire, like the, um, windows in my house were flooded, no joke, flooded with like 30 ladybugs live <laughs> on the outside of our windows. <laughs> oh, cool shit along for seven days. <laughs> it was just, and then we, we did a memorial service in Northern Michigan. My husband and I did, uh, with, with this beautiful, like memorial service. And we were all up there and we get there and we're walking on the beach. I've never seen a ladybug up there. The first day we get there, I'm just miserable. And I look up and Troy's like, oh. Troy, my husband at the time was like, Carol, 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 there's a ladybug. My little niece, Cl Clara, Carol, 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 there's a ladybug. I look up, ladybugs flooding the beach. I was like, so like if God isn't all over that. I mean, <laughs> what else could be that be? What else could that be? Yeah. You never see more than one or two ladybugs at a time. I know. Never. <laughs> You have multiple sightings of multiple ladybugs. Like 30 ladybugs in our windows for seven days. <laughs> and then like a ladybug in flight through grace on the day of. Like, yeah. So are, you, are your shoulders okay? Because shoulders? usually when that happens, you can feel his hands on your shoulder. Oh. Well, let's think about that. Yeah, they're definitely there. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm happy for you. I really am happy for you. Thank you. you. Know, uh, we we all go through traumas in life, and we all go through things that we think are inconsolable that we never get yes. past it. Yeah. But when we open our heart and we realize that, you know, our life is to be completed, is to be go go forward, is to make something better for some other people somewhere along the way. Somewhere along the way, our job is to enrich other people's lives. Yes. And what you're doing with all your efforts is certainly doing that. Ah, oh, thank you. Certainly doing it. I applaud you, young lady. Ah, oh, thank you so I do. much. I applaud you. I have two daughters older than you, and I, I have, uh, well, I have four children, five grandchildren, and oh. five great-grandchildren. Oh, my so gosh. That's so exciting. I'm one of these, uh, uh, what your f husband's family would call an alta caca, an old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, uh, I, I, I know what life brings, and I've been at deathbeds of people that I love too many times, and I've been close to that myself too many times. Oh, and, wow. And I know that the joy is to wake up in the morning, give thanks yeah. for one more day, and do yeah. something meaningful. Yeah. Do something meaningful. Yes. Yes. And you're doing it. You're doing it. So you're you're involved with the Make a Wish Foundation in New York. You have your new proceeds, and your goal is to reach a hundred thousand dollars to do that, ladies and gentlemen. While you're watching this show, all of our contact information is going to be below in the in the show notes. That's where you can send the check. Right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> I uh, make no bones about it. It's my show. Uh, I can say anything I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's your show. You can say what you want to. <laughs> my right, Bonnie and I can cry if I want to. That's I'm, not, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to laugh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, when do we get a chance to see the pilot of the show from Cincinnati? Oh, I'm in post production now. I have a meeting uh, on Saturday. I can't wait to see the footage. And um, it'll be, we're hoping to get it on some big streaming platform by in 2023. It's a little bit of a, there'll be a little bit of a lag, but that's okay. You can follow me on Carol, C-A-R-O-L-E dot Mac, M-A-C on Instagram and be able to find it all. And it'll all be in the show notes, folks. So oh, perfect. You didn't write it down, it'll all be in there. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. Any new ventures in the planning after that comes out? Well, that's sort of, like I said, uh, it's eight years ago, that that's would be the show of my life where I would be happy for the rest of my life if that's what I did. So we have mapped out season one, season two, season three. Um, the goal is to go wild with that, travel the world and take people with all types of hardship. This is not about loss or child loss. This is about any tough stuff, which yeah. every single one of us has gone through, particular for food lovers, like people that like dream about food, think about food, their vacations are surrounded about around food, like their thoughts are food. That's that's the target audience here. Um, and then they've they've suffered some hardships. So we want to like blow their minds and take them all over the world. And that's great. That's and it's great. Gonna be, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. I'm also doing um, I'm launching a couple courses this fall. One's called how to take it's a challenge going to be a challenge how to take your holidays back after loss um which i'm so excited to put out there i i figured out how to take my holidays back and i learned that it's really just about taking your power back and once i learned how to take my power back after loss it was so easy to feel powerless when your child is gone and and in my case it was my only child and it was genetic so there was all kinds of complications um so it feels very, it felt very powerless, but it's taking your power back and changing the paradigm, doing, you know, a paradigm shift on your holidays and your life. And so this is a, a, a great challenge before the holidays for anyone that wants to just kind of learn how to feel better and have tools and tips that, that I used over the last 12 years that actually move the needle to help um, ease some of that just pain during the holidays. And then I'm putting together a, a grief relief masterclass as well. So That's one terrific. that helps, helps to take back your whole life, your whole That's life. Terrific. Yeah. Last weekend, my wife and I attended a weekend. It's called the weekend to remember. And it's produced by um, uh, family life centers and they're all over the United States. And they, and they, uh, they do about, uh, I don't know, Hundred or two hundred of these weekends every year, all across, wow. the and there were over five hundred people in the one we attended. Wow! So with the big attendance, yeah. And they they focus primarily on family unity, oneness between husband and wife. But oh. there are there are questions in there always for people who uh, have had losses and the grief requirements. And I thought that was a part of the program they could have expanded with people who have more personal awareness. So I'm giving you a tip that this is a company you might want to connect with because they have lots and lots of connections across the country. They're okay. part of Moody. They're part of Moody radio. Wow. Great. Okay. Giant, giant broadcasting. Thing. Great. Thank and, you. And it's needed. It's definitely needed. You could, I, I needed something it. valuable. I needed to desperately, and I had the most amazing and have the most amazing therapist of all time. And yet it, I still needed a, a, someone that had been through it. Yeah. Like nobody looked in me in my face that had been through it. I was really, you know, quite young at the time to lose your child. I was yeah. what, 34. And, um, I, I didn't, I, nobody looked at me and said, you can feel better again. I didn't have that because I, all of my friends were all having kids. There was no yeah. one who lost a child, as, yeah. especially, only, you know, their only child not going on to have like, so it just, I didn't have that. And I, for three years, I had committed to it, but I didn't actually know how I would do it. I didn't really believe it was possible. I just knew that I felt like it honored 
TJ and my parents and the life that I was given to not be miserable. And I just, how do I get there? And if I had had someone that was like, I promise you it's possible. I am not lying to you. Like in my blood, bone, cells, heart, I have been changed. I have, I have, I feel happy again, genuinely. And I'm thriving again. And um, I, if I had known that was actually truly possible from someone who'd been there, that would have made so much difference in the three years that I didn't believe it sure. until, you know, it would just sure. change my hope. I you might have, not enough. Wow. You, you'd have to go through the processes yourself, but having someone that you know has gone through it and not only survived, but succeeded at it. Yeah. That would have been a help. That would have yeah. certainly been a help. I needed and, it. I needed it. Yeah. Well, you can provide that for others, obviously. That's what yeah. you're about. That's exactly yeah. what you're about. I'm just going to give them exactly what I needed and hope that it helps. I mean, everybody's grief is different and everyone's journey is different. And, um, but, you know, they could try it and whatever. If it works, it works. That's right. Lead a horse to water. That's all you can do. <laughs> yeah. Can't exactly. make a drink. Can't yeah. make a drink. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so okay. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that uh, I have my youngest son, who is, his name is uh, Matthew. He calls himself Mateo these days. Ah, uh, Mateo! A, a true tradition of his lineage, Mateo Buccellato. Ah, oh, uh, Mateo Buccellato! He graduated with a degree in communications, but he's been a chef all his life. And he's been, <gasps> from the time he was a kid, he was in a newspaper. And I've taken him to Italy so many times. And he would go into the kitchens and he'd learn how to do this and how to do that. And he'd smuggle plants back into the United States and raise his own tomatoes and basil and all that stuff. Fantastic young man. Fantastic young man. Well, he has a shop now in here in Florida and he makes gourmet donuts, believe me. Uh... The shop is called Mojo Donuts. Oh, and my he God. And he was on a bake off, a national bake off on TV. And his show came in, his shop came in second in the nation. And he makes fantastic donuts. Where I mean, in Florida? He's in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Hollywood, Florida on Pines in Pines and University. It's called what? Mojo Donuts. O-M-G. So where's Hollywood? M-O-J-O Donuts. Mojo. Okay, Mojo. <gasps> Wait, so where's Hollywood in the scheme of okay, Florida? Okay, Hollywood is uh, west of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, got it. Okay, so <gasps> he for Father's Day. I'm a kind of person who's been blessed. I don't, you know, I, I'm not materialistic. I really don't need things, but I love good food and I love to eat. So for Father's Day, he created a donut for me, <gasps> and he called it pa Papa Carlos Donut. Oh my and gosh! Well, tell it, me everything. And he made it with. With uh, anisette in it, and he made it with uh, 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 the the creams that the, you put in the cannoli, and he made it with these ricotta. Finally, got the cheese that you put into the, and he flavored it with a zest from a lemon. I got to tell you, it was the most delicious thing I ever tasted in my life. That's a Sicily Jonah, of course. That's a Sicily Jonah. Oh my gosh, it's Fantastic. a Sicilian. Oh, right. He put God. it in the shop. He put it in the shop to, to sell. Sold out in ten minutes, you know. Oh. So now he's going to have it as a regular. But it's called Papa Carlos Donuts, you know. And I felt so honored that he named it after me. I really did. I've taught my children. I, you know, I, I love to take my children uh, when they were even when they were small. I would people would travel and they'd leave the kids home with the babysitters. I took them all over the world. And I and I taught them every time I took them to Italy as quick as they could walk. They went to Italy. Yeah. I always I always taught the kids. Look, you walk around. You want something to eat. You're in a place where you see all these tourists. First thing you have to do is you got to walk two or three blocks away. From <laughs> then you right. walk to an open door and you stop, and you listen. If you hear only the language of the country you're in, okay. Then you you smell smell garlic. Go in. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good tip. It's great. <laughs> and you always have a great meal. And we've had wonderful meals all over the world. All over. Oh. So I, uh, I really am so happy you joined me today on this show. I really am. You have a bright smile. You have a great cheer. And you have a glow coming from inside of you that I know is 
is meant for another reason. But I, I bless you. Uh, I'm so, happy, so happy to meet you. I really am. I really am. And maybe we'll do this again sometime. Oh, that'd be so okay. fun. It's been such an honor. It's been such an honor. I can't, I just love the synergies. I love the Sicilian. I love the donuts. We both love food. Oh, I'm just, I mean, look at me. Do you ever see, I mean, Will Rogers said he never met a man he didn't like. I never met a, I never had a meal I didn't like. I'm <laughs> the same way. <laughs> oh, I okay. love it. So we have to close down. I'm going to give you a few minutes to say whatever you like. Okay. And then I'll close the show. Good. Okay. I, I would love to say, if you are going through hardship of any kind, you can get through it. Like you can do it. You have more power, more resilience, more strength than you could ever know. And um, you can not only get through, but you can genuinely feel good in your bones again. And you can also totally thrive in your life. And it's possible. I, I needed to know that. And um, I can now say that with absolute, absolute truth. And you guys can do it. So you heard it from a master. She's a sommelier. She knows right. all those things, you know, how to blend the grape together, the right acidity, all those things that make it, take it from grape juice into some fine nectar that God meant you to drink. That's right. Fine wine. It gets better with time. Absolutely. It ages and it gets better with time. And tried and true truths like this statement she just made gets better with time too. Mm -hmm. The more you live it, the more you live it out, the more you will find it's embracing you and it's helping you to become more than who you think you could be. 100%. Live it out. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for joining us today. I remind you that we have a new show every Wednesday morning with wonderful guests like Carol. I also tell you what I say all the time. If you have a guest that you'd like to suggest for the show, please do write in, tell me about them. And that's how Carol got on the show. Someone suggested her. I didn't know her before. Now she's like one of my daughters. Forever I'll know her. Aww. But you, you're right. that's how you do it. You write in and you tell people about what you saw. And I want to remind you all, you have your own story. Every one of you out there has your story. And no one can tell it like you can. Tell your loved ones, tell your friends, tell the people you know, write it down. Because when it's too late, it's too late. Write it so that the world will benefit from it. Let us know. And I also want to tell you something that I tell you every weekend, especially with this beautiful face shining at me. Tell someone you love them today. Very ah. important. Say, I love you. Hug somebody. Say, I love you. God bless. Carol, God bless you. God bless you back. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you for tuning into the show. I hope that it resonated with you. It certainly did with me. And I hope it encouraged you to realize the true power of your story. As a reminder, new episodes will be released Wednesday mornings on your favorite podcast apps and also on YouTube as well. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn your notification button on to ensure that you receive updates on new episode releases. I'm grateful for your reviews and your support. The love is certainly felt. Keep it coming. You can reach out to connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or stop by my website to everypageaturning.com. All links are clickable in the show notes for quick access. Do you think that you or someone you know may be our most inspiring guest yet? Let's hope so. Click on our contact page and get in touch on my website and share your story. I look forward to reading each one person. My best-selling book, To Every Page of Turning, which was published by Mascot Books, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and many more popular book retailers. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Till next time, remember that every day is a new opportunity to write your new page in your incredible journey. And it is incredible. You're the only one who has it.